So in this section, we'll turn our attention away slightly from the pure graphs of radical functions. Now we're going to actually apply the graphs to solving a radical equation. Remember that solving an equation means finding the value of x that makes the equation true. And since it's a radical equation, the equation is going to have a root sign in it. So this radical equation here, square root of x plus 5 minus 3 equals 0. In pre-calculus 20, we would have gone and we would have solved this algebraically, doing it by hand. What that looks like. In order to do it this way, we need to isolate the root sign. So we'll add 3 to both sides. Canceling out the root means we have to square both sides. Gives us x plus 5 equals 9. Subtract the 5 and we get that x equals 4. This method works extremely well for simple radical equations, ones that have one variable. Uh, ones that don't have a lot of stuff outside the root sign, for example, x plus 3, that would involve FOIL multiplication and would sincerely complicate the solving process. As well, doing this algebraically also introduces the possibility of creating extraneous roots or extra answers that we would then have to go and plug into the original equation and check. If we turn to a graphing method, then we don't get those extra roots and we don't have to deal with that added level of complexity. In order to solve this equation by graphing, we don't need to isolate the root. In fact, the exact opposite, we need a zero on one side like this equation is given as. So we'll turn to the graphing calculator. We'll start putting that equation into the y equals menu. Now, the biggest issue with graphing a radical equation is getting the brackets in the right spot. The brackets begin automatically from the calculator, and the brackets will end once the square root has ended. So the square root ends at the x plus 5. That's where we'll close the bracket like that, minus 3 and we'll graph that out. Now the sketch here is not 100% important, but it is going to give us some help in solving this equation. So we'll sketch it out somewhat accurately. And to solve this equation, that involves finding the spot where the graph crosses the x-axis. To do that, we need to go to the calculation menu, that's second trace. The x-intercept is also commonly called the zero, so we want option two. We need to answer three questions from the calculator. Left bound means we need to move the cursor to the left of the x-intercept, which is right here at the moment. It is to the left of the x-intercept, right here. Right bound, we need to move the cursor to the right of the x-intercept. And we can go a little farther just to make sure. And the guess, we move the cursor back until it's close to the x-intercept. That looks close to me. And assuming we did the math rate algebraically, this should work out to 4. And it does.